Hi everyone, thank you for being here. I'm Damien and uh, I would like to thank Frederick and uh, Frederick and Bram for being here today uh, for this news coffee corner. So before to get into uh, the real details, I would like to um, answer the first question, which is going to be what is news coffee corner? Well, basically news coffee corner will be a series of informal conversation with both customers and tech partners, technology partners from outside. And in each uh, edition, we will try to cover um, some and have some insights about opportunities, successes, and the top tricks and tips at the time of building the ecosystem and forming the right partnerships. So basically, when you have a break, well, instead of scrolling the web and not doing anything, grab a coffee, relax, and just enjoy some really insightful learnings about our industry. So today uh, we will cover during this session uh, data automation and enhanced analytics, breaking silos and driving more profitability. That's why we have here today, and I welcome them again, Frederick and Bram, and I, will, I would like to hand over to them for a quick presentation. So first of all, Frederick, please, if you want to introduce yourself. Well, thank you, Damien. Thank you for uh, having me here on the on the coffee corner. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is uh, Frederick Tanche, and I'm the uh, head of revenue distribution and systems at Legala Hospitality Group. Fantastic. And then we have Bram from Juyo Analytics. Hi, my name is Bram. I'm the chief commercial officer at Juyo. Uh, makes me in charge of anything related to sales, marketing, and partnerships. Amazing. Well, uh, now that we know each other, I would like to hand over first to Frederick to talk a bit more about uh, his relation with Muse and uh, with Julio, explain a bit about the operation and how both systems have empowered, I would say, the operation really. And how do you see, Frederick, um, uh, the integration in our, our, with our vision? How does it work? Please go ahead. Well, first, I'll, I'll take the opportunity to uh, tell you a little bit more about uh, Legal Hospitality Group. Um, we're a, a Swedish-based company uh, with uh, operations in, in Sweden, Denmark, and Germany at the moment. Uh, we operate uh, 45 hotels, uh, 40 under our own brands, such as uh, Profil Hotels by Legula, uh, Good Morning Hotels by Legula, Motel L, uh, and the rest you can also uh, see in the description here. Uh, on top of that, we operate five uh, hotels on a, on a franchise basis. Fantastic. And can you tell us a bit more why you made this decision to switch to Muse? Um, well, the decision to switch to Muse, uh, it was made just before me uh, joining the company back in uh, in June 2021. So I actually joined just as we went uh, went live. But the company was looking for uh, for a cloud based PMS that that supported. Uh, um, supported us working in, in uh, from a multi-property perspective um, as we were we were growing uh, quite significantly significantly with the number of hotels. Uh, so in order to uh, to allow um, us to continue growing and to to uh, to easily integrate uh, other systems with with our PMS, uh, the decision was made to uh, uh, to integrate uh, Muse across the portfolio. Looks looks fantastic. I'm just seeing on the slide a fun fact. Can you tell us a bit more about this fun fact about the spoon here? Yeah, um, one of the questions I get quite a lot is what what does actually legula mean? And so legula is Latin and word means uh, spoon. Uh, and the word spoon in various forms actually comes across throughout the uh, uh, the organization. Um, our uh, founder and CEO uh, Uwe, his last name is Leffler, uh, and Leffler is also another. Uh, it's, it's German for, I believe, spoonmaker. Pardon, pardon my German. It's uh, not a strong suit of mine. Um, then, for instance, we have uh, the various legal entities that the hotels operate under. One of them is named uh, Cochleari, which is another word for spoon. So it kind of, kind of goes through the organization on various levels. Okay, amazing. So, 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 yeah, a lot of creativity I see from your side. <laughs> yeah. If we get back into into the more technologies, the tech side, let's say, um, uh, what was really the, the the enhancement you've seen and the benefit from having Muse and Juyo together? Um, well, first of all, af after we went live with uh, with Muse, we we were looking for a for a business intelligence solution, and uh, obviously, Muse Marketplace uh, have a lot of uh, different tools available. And uh, um, we came across Yuya Analytics and and felt that uh, they really supported our vision on uh, uh, on not only business intelligence and and the and the 
decision making process, but also on the visualization part that that would make it easy for for anyone across the um, organization to uh, um, take part of the data and, and use that in their everyday decision making. Yeah, get it. And from, yeah. from your point of view, what would be from your expertise you have now with both systems and, and with Julio, um, what would be your, your top tip, I would say, or your recommendation maybe for a new hotelier thinking about switching to these systems? I think let's let's go back and then just so that we cover the three points here. Uh, so so ask maybe again about the the, the features and the sorry uh, and the benefits so that we go through that and then come down to the uh, okay the top tip. Okay, so let's do it. So Frederick, mm -hmm. from your point of view, what what would be the main features you would you would talk about uh, between Muse and Julio? Well, first of all, by 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 having the data from from Muse easily accessible. Uh, in UEO, it helps us in making better informed decisions and 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 actually making sure that all the decisions that we that we make are, are data driven decisions, so that we remove the the personal bias, which can be uh, quite common otherwise. Um, by doing this, it helps us to to improve efficiency and improve productivity. Uh, that can be anything from uh, from helping with with staffing um, to evaluate sales and marketing efforts. Um, and at the end, it kind of it helps us to to enhance uh, accountability um, because we make sure that we we base our our decision and strategies on on actionable or actual data, um, and based on that, we will we will get a certain outcome. Not always might not always be what uh, what we anticipated, but at least that we know that we we took this decision uh, based on a specific set of data, and, and then it will be. It's easier for us to um, uh, to uh, to enhance the accountability, uh, no matter um, where it yeah. comes from. Yeah, well, well, well thank you. That's, that's that's fantastic, and we see real expertise from your side uh, using this this system. Um, what would be your 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 tip? I would say a recommendation for a hotelier or a hotelier looking for this system, for example. Well. I think the, the the most crucial part for us, and then something that I that I can only recommend others to do as well, is to make sure that your analytics tool will not only help you to uh, to improve your top line, but also be able to uh, to derive the impact of the top line growth uh, that it has on your GOP and the NOP. And I think that is something that that UEO does in a, in a great way because of the way that we can configure uh, and relate costs. Back to the specific to the to the reservation level of things. Yeah, well, well, well fantastic. It, it was really great, and thank you again uh, for for having this um, this discussion. I would say and and and, and open it. Um, so now that you have the point of view from you for, from the hotelier, I would like to switch maybe to Bram and to talk a bit more about the technology that makes everything happen here. Um, so Bram, please, can you tell us a bit more about the benefits you see uh, from your perspective? Yeah, absolutely. Um, just, I guess, a, a bit of a high-level introduction first. Um, we've been working together, meaning Muse and Geo, uh, uh, since roughly the start of uh, 2021. And you can see here on screen uh, a pile of, um, uh, of joint customers uh, that, we, uh, that we have, uh, getting close to 100, um, 100 hotels now. Um, one of the, the, the key powers of Geo is, is the fact that we create a lot of efficiency and save, uh, save our customers time. So on average, between six to eight hours a week per revenue manager in data management tasks. So you can think, for example, of exporting data, cleaning the data, structuring the data, and actually preparing them for use. Um, uh, and of course, then also as a BI and data visualization tool, we make the data pretty in, uh, uh, in, in graphs and charts so that you can actually see anomalies quickly and um, uh, by clicking very simply, um, dig further into, for example, related causes or you know what's sitting underneath a particular data point. Um, so on top of saving costs, we help hotels uh, um, uh, optimize, help them optimize indeed by, by targeting more and better revenue. By better revenue, I mean more profitable, as Frederick was um, uh, already alluding to. So being able to uh, drill down at a per reservation level across all the segments or dimensions that are available um, uh, from the PMS as well as deduced from the surrounding data. Uh, which types of reservations are actually contributing the most to your bottom line or contributing the least to your bottom line. 
Thanks, Amir. And here, here on screen, we can see um, a little video on the right hand side that shows you uh, the beating heart of Geo, the, the dashboarding engine. Uh, how do we add visualizations into a dashboard? We can use drag and drop to reorganize them, resize them, um, and uh, uh, basically explore all the different dimensions sitting behind uh, the different reservations. So as that video plays, I'm going to talk a little bit um, more about our integration. Um, from Muse, we take uh, reservation level transactional data, including the change history of, um, uh, of reservations. This allows us to not just um, say, hey, on this date you produced so much revenue, you can get that data from, from other points as well. But for example, the change history allows us to deduce a lot of other valuable information, such as, for example, the booked versus sold uh, ADR on room types, whether specific reservations were upgraded for free or upsold and things like that. Um, so those are types of analytics that you'll also find visualized within uh, within Geo. Um, as you were seeing in the video here, um, uh, the Geo dashboarding engine is fully customizable. I don't think there's there's anything that even, uh, uh, even comes close to that. And when we analyze um, uh, within Geo, you can either build dashboards from scratch, which is more or less what you've been seeing on the screen, uh, but also you can use any of our predefined templates, which we call uh, constellations as a starting point for your journey. So we have, I think, close to 40 constellations now that cover topics such as room type analytics, pickup analytics, pace analytics, um, company analytics, uh, country analytics, and there, there's a whole pile more there um, that you can use to, um, on the one hand, derive insights, what's happening within my company, uh, and on the other hand, power your decision making and answer um, uh, specific questions. So. Um, Frederick already mentioned our distribution cost module where we allocate distribution cost. You don't do it per reservation, but you configure them to be allocated at a reservation level so that when you start using those analysis, you can actually see across all the dimensions in a filtered and cross filtered way where each of these um, higher or lower profitability elements lie. Um, we ingest also um, um, other revenue information uh, other than room revenue from the PMS. So we visualize also total revenue, including other and F&B split out into those categories. So again, you'll be able to see which segments, for example, or which countries or which companies have the highest multiplier from room revenue to total revenue. So again, you're looking at how what's adding value to my business. Um, the two final points that I, meant, that I will mention um, is our calendar functionality. We have a standard calendar, just like any other BI tool, just like any hotel or airline website, um, if you want to cover specific dates. Um, but we have a, a little orange button there that opens up um, the Superman capabilities. And they're really quite powerful to uh, transmute the elements of time to look at your data. So you can include or exclude specific days of week. You can overlay booking periods as well as stay periods. Um, you can uh, compare seamlessly and fully flexibly different time periods against each other. So a great example there in our European market, for example, is Easter. You can actually compare Easter to Easter in just a few clicks uh, without having to um, go through a, a continuous uh, import export exercise. Um, we also allow you to set a reference date and a reference date is basically a snapshot date but it's not a fixed snapshot um, because if you select, for example, today, the 1st of September, you will see the dashboard the way it is, but as it was on the 1st of September. Um, and you'll still be able to use all the interactivity within the platform. So you can filter and cross filter as if it were the 1st of September to answer questions like, you know, how much did we pick up in that period since, um, which segments were driving that performance at that time, which um, uh, channels were driving us the most business at that time. And you can dig into any, uh, any level that you want. And finally, uh, we combine uh, PMS data with external sources. So think, for example, of rate shoppers, benchmarking tools, uh, revenue management systems, but also uh, market intelligence tools to give you context to your data. Because at first glance, that 85% occupancy that you have on the books might look great. But then if you find out that your uh, market penetration index is, um, say, below 100 at, at 95 or something, uh, you know that your competition is actually doing better than you are, which um, uh, gives you um, a much better perspective on that 85% as a, uh, as a metric. So that kind of sums up um, uh, how we help our customers drive more uh, more revenue, more profit, and become more efficient in their day-to-day. -day. Well, Bram, thank you very much. I think when, when we hear you, at least we feel some, some kind of expertise, I'd say. <laughs> and it was the same before with Frederick. So I think it's time to just 
thank you very much. Say thank you very much to both of you guys for being here today and 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 having this discussion with um, all of us. Let's say I hope we bring we brought some uh, inside and interesting learnings for all the people who joined and uh, and listened to us. So thank you also to all the people who watched this uh, first session of News Coffee Corner. Um, if you want to subscribe to more of this series of News Coffee Corner, please subscribe and sign up to our newsletter or follow us on LinkedIn and you should be aware of the next uh, session that we will have. So yeah, again, thank you very much, guys, and hope to see you soon. Thanks so much. Thank you.